All right, crew, 18.5 is 12.5 is 11.6. It's a fun, exciting workout. If you haven't done it, you're in for a treat. Uh, this is classic CrossFit. To, it's just to the textbook. What Cross, CrossFit is about, um, it is gonna test your willpower. It's gonna test your courage to, to run into the pain cave. And I think everyone should experience this. So I'm really excited about it. I'm actually glad that we, as a community voted on this one. So way to go guys, it's gonna be fun. Um, let's dive into it. This is a pretty straightforward workout. We're doing a seven minute AMRAP with an ascending ladder and two movements. Thrusters and chest of bar pull-ups for the RX division. For the scaled and for the masters divisions, we're doing chin over bar pull-ups. So if you're in the scaled division or you're doing any, any of the masters, I think coming, I think 50, and up, I believe, are doing chin over bar pull-ups. So um, same principles still apply. We're still gonna approach it the same way, whether it is at a 100 pound bar or a 45 pound bar, we're doing chest over bar pull-ups, we're doing chin over bar pull-ups. We're gonna approach this in the same fashion depending on what your fitness level is and uh, what your goals are. So um, let's, uh, let's jump into this. Seven minutes, it's quick. It's going to burn, you're gonna get pumped full of lactic acid. You're gonna be well above your threshold for the majority of this workout. Once the four minute time, uh, uh, once, the, once four minutes into the workout's hit, I mean, it's pretty much throttle on the rest of the workout. You got three minutes of work left. So at that point, because your body, it, because it's such a short, fast, hard workout, we really wanna be intentional about getting a good, strong warm up in. We want to be sweating going into this workout. Think of like an Olympic sprinter. An Olympic sprinter who's doing a 100 meter, uh, 100 meter sprint, he is very warm. The, she would be um, just sweat. She has a, a strong sweat going on and be ready, loose and ready to go at 100% in their 100 meter sprint. Now, if you're doing a long distance run, you're going out for a marathon, you don't need to warm up as much, but we're not doing a marathon, we're doing the sprint. So make sure you get warmed up really, really well. Wear some sweatpants, wear a sweatshirt, get nice and warm, and make sure that you're sweating before you go into this workout. Then you can take the sweats off. It's go time, shake it out. Now we're in the ring, time to fight. So uh, get a good warm up in. Uh, a couple things that I like to focus on for chest bar pull-ups and doing thrusters, especially the combo. I like to stretch my lats, I like to stretch my shoulders, I actually stretch my pecs out a lot. I don't know why, but when you do chest bar pull-ups or even just a lot of pull-ups in general, for some reason my chest always gets pumped. It's that, that, that stretch and that tension that goes through the uh, shoulder and uh, uh, pec att attachment there um, that, really, um, that really gets me. So make sure that that is nice and warm, um, as well as making sure that your hips are nice and stretched. We wanna make sure that we can get a good, strong bounce. If you go back and watch the announcement, watch Katrin's thrusters. They're done beautifully. She's using the, the stretch reflex out of the bottom of her squat to come out of the thruster faster, and it helped benefit her in a lot of ways because she was able to have a faster rep cycle. So make sure your hips are nice and warmed up, nice and loose, so you can really utilize that stretch reflex. It'd be very helpful. Um, when doing this workout, think about keeping consistent movement. We don't ever want to get to the point where we're so fatigued that we can't have our normal kip. We can't have our normal thruster. If you're to that point four minutes in, you've gone hard, too hard, too fast for too long already. We want to get to that point right around the five minute mark, six minute mark, when we start to tip over. By minute seven, you're gonna be a zombie that's barely walking. You, you're, you're not even gonna know and understand how you're still standing, but you're gonna be standing somehow. We don't wanna be there three minutes in. We don't wanna be there four minutes in. So make sure you mitigate that right and make, make sure you're doing that well. Your heart rate's gonna spike right off the bat. The transitions from three, six, and nine happen really fast. You have to be efficient and have to make sure that you, you're not wasting time going back and forth between them but make sure that you, at the same time, are going at a pace that's gonna allow you to keep good, consistent movement all the way through the workout. Don't go to failure. Don't go to failure on your chest or bar pull-ups. Don't go to failure on your chin over bar pull-ups and don't go to failure on your thrusters. If you get to that point, you're going to be wasting a lot of time. You started to see the women 
go really fast with their transitions back and forth, but they were taking smart, intelligent breaks on the movement when they needed to, rather than trying to do big, large sets and be forced to break, having to sit there and wait and wait and wait. Yes, you will get to that point later on in the workout, especially when you start to hit five and a half minutes, six minutes in, but you don't want to be there at three minutes. If you're there already there at three minutes, you've gone too fast. Settle in, pick a good pace, be smart. So when you get to that five minute mark, you only have two and a half minutes of work that you can really, uh, or excuse me, when you get to the five minutes, you have two minutes left of work that you can really just put the hammer down and put, you know, full throttle, throttle, get after it. So be smart there. Uh, don't go to failure. Um, uh, I had a friend call me actually before this workout. It was kind of interesting. He just had a feeling that it's going to be 11.6. Maybe it's the way that we're all voting, but, um, he asked me, he's like, how would you approach this workout? What, what, what breaks would you take? And how would you, you know, you, you've done it before. What would you do? And we started to talk about suggested breaks and where I might start to consider taking breaks on things. I personally love thrusters. I was on my social media earlier today and I asked everyone to vote for thrusters. So I'm a happy camper. Chest bar pull-ups, on the other hand, I am a bigger individual, so I have to make sure that I'm smart with chest bar pull-ups. I can do them well, but I still have to be smart. So for me, thrusters, I don't look at them and, tr and think of where am I gonna break up my thrusters as much as when am I gonna start breaking up my chest bar pull-ups and what does that look like when I do? So my question is, are you gonna be someone who if, um, and let's just say if someone who has they can do 30 chest bar uh, pull-ups unbroken. You need to determine, do you wanna start breaking at the round of nine or the round of 12? For some of us, we're gonna to have to start breaking up uh, maybe in the round of six. That's just dependent on your skill level, how good you are at chest bar pull-ups, how efficient you are with your kip, all those different things. Um, can you butterfly? Can, are you doing a uh, kipping pull-up, kipping chest bar pull-up? All those kind of come into play and I highly recommend going and looking at some movement videos, especially some demonstrations of what a butterfly chest bar pull-ups look like or a kippy chest bar pull-up looks like. But at what point do we choose to break in the round of nine and the round of 12? Well, if your chest bar pull-ups are not your strong suit and your chest bar pull-up max is sub 30, I would consider starting to break earlier than you think. It actually will benefit you later on. So in the round of nine, it's okay to do six three. Me personally, I like to do kind of a two third, maybe three quarter split. So in the round of, let's say I break at the round of 15, maybe I do 10 five or I do uh, 12 three, something of that nature, allowing me to get the bulk of the work done, but then I take a small break and only have a little bit of work left. I like that approach. It's, it's easier for me. I kind of get past that halfway mark and it's kind of downhill from there kind of idea. So, uh, but for some of you doing it in, in two thirds increment could be a great option. So definitely take that into consideration. Uh, my, my max chest bar pull-ups is right around that 55 chest bar pull-up range. So maybe that gives you an idea of, of, of where and how you should be breaking up uh, and we should when you should choose to break those up. Um, so be mindful of that. Kind of, kind of go into this with a small plan of where you want to break that up, where you want to be with your chest bar pulls, where you think you can be. It will benefit you more to break them up early with short breaks than to try to hang on. What a lot of people don't realize is if, if they try to hold on too early for, those, for these sets when they're starting to get tired, even maybe in the round of six, when they're trying to hold on, rather than just coming off the bar, jumping back up, getting out of tension, uh, it, it comes and actually kicks them in the butt later on in the workout, and they kind of go over their threshold and they don't have as good of a performance because they've gone over their threshold and they're forced to go below their th threshold. But if we can mitigate that and we can stay at or below our threshold for the majority of the workout, that's when we're gonna get our best performance. So keep that in mind, go in with a plan and have that. Um, same goes for the thrusters. If thrusters are something that are really hard for you, uh, it, it will definitely behoove you to get out from underneath the load of the barbell earlier on. You don't have to break for a long time. 
quick breaks are great. It allows you to get a big suck of oxygen, refuel your muscles with some oxygen. That's always a great feeling. So be mindful of that, be aware of that, know your body, know your fitness level, and make those decisions with and, and have a plan going into this workout. Again, we don't wanna to get to the point where we're forced to break, where we've gone for too large of a set, and now we were bent over, staring at the bar, wondering when we're gonna be able to get back on because our whole body is starting to go numb. Um, so with that, Pace to your fitness level. Be smart about that. Your fitness level is gonna determine when and where and how you make a plan for this workout. Don't let your ego get in the way. Have fun with it, but challenge yourself. Get on the bar maybe just a half a second before you think you can and see what you're made of. See if you can do it. Find out, do it, just give everything you have and it is, you're just gonna lie on the ground exhausted, but you're gonna be proud of the effort that you put in. So. Uh, this workout is going to be fun. Uh, I know for my approach, I'm going to come out hard. I'm going to come out fast. Uh, I'm going to knock the round of three, the round of six, and the round of nine out almost as fast as I can. Um, that will be almost, almost those, just those three rounds will almost be for time in their own way. And then at the round of 12, I'll reassess. Uh, I'll personally kind of look at the round of 12 like, okay, where's my heart rate? Where's my fatigue level? And I'll start to kind of determine how I want to approach the rest of the workout at that point. I have something in my mind for the most part. I've done this workout before. Um, so with that, I definitely uh, will, you know, will keep that in mind. But uh, it'll kind of help me determine how I approach the round of 15 and the round of 18 when I, in that round of 12. It'll definitely be my, uh, it'll kind of set the tone for the rest of the workout. So um, Go in, uh, have fun with it guys, go in with, it, with a plan, go in with an approach. Uh, try to stick to your guns, but at the end of the day, have fun, high five people. It is the last workout of the Open. This is so awesome. We're just so fortunate to be able to do this, that we have the physical capability to perform in the Open and get to enjoy community the way we do. So love on each other, enjoy it. I'm so thankful for all the support you guys have shown me. Thank you for tuning in for my tips and tricks. Um, uh, be on the lookout. I'm going to do a podcast, uh, just kind of following up the open, uh, just you know, giving all my thoughts and feelings and on, on how it's gone and what we're looking forward to the rest of the year. So thank you so much, guys. I hope this has been helpful for you guys. I look forward to next year to be able to bring even better tips and suggestions for strategies and approach to you guys. Um, I've been reading all your comments, all, um, all the feedback that you guys have for me, and it's been so great to see. Uh, thank you for helping me just continue to learn and refine my skills uh, in this, and I, I just uh, hope that we can uh, continue to grow in the community together. So thank you guys, good luck, love you, have fun, high five some friends, um, enjoy it, 18.5 is gonna be a good one. We'll see you guys.